All right. So data center networking issues. The first is that oversubscription is an issue. Um, we have a, in the same rack, there is no oversubscription generally because you just get one gigabit and one gigabit out to the switch. But from the switch onwards, you have one to two to one to 20 oversubscription. For example, you might have 32 times 10 gigabit down, but only eight times 10 gigabit up, which is 80 to 320, four to one oversubscription. Core routers are sub oversubscribed one to 240. 240 times more traffic can come in than it can get out. <laughs> right? So generally keep, so basically your idea is that you want to really keep people who are talking too much together. Because if they have to talk over the backbone, then backbone is already oversubscribed. It will be a big problem, right? So you want to put services which talk to each other in the same rack. Either that, or you change your network. So a lot of people are doing research on how to change the network so that anybody can talk to anybody. Right? So moving across subnets is painful. But that's another problem, is that Ethernet is good, IP is bad. And you will hear this lecture all the way through this IEEE and throughout the data center thing, because Ethernet made few decisions early in the game which really are helping now 40 years later. IP made some decision early in the game which are hurting us 40 years later. And one of the decision is how to address things. Ethernet addresses by the name, I, IP addresses by the location. So your IP address is row three, row two, chair four. If you move to that one, your IP address changes, big problem. Your Ethernet address is fixed. Whatever your name is, that is your Ethernet address. You move there, you're still the same address. You move there, it is still the same address. I can still send a packet address to you, you will get it. So the Ethernet does not care for the location. It just gets the packets to the right place. And that's big, big advantage when you want to move the virtual machines around. You can move any service to any other place, if, but if you don't go to layer three, they're all happy, because you'll get there. If I have to go through layer three, then I have to find your location. So, so moving across subnets is painful, requires reconfiguration IP addresses and VLAN trunks and so on and so forth. What is VLAN? Virtual, Virtual LAN. And I have a whole lecture on that one right now. I don't know whether we taught you in, uh, in, in 473 or not, but since this lecture, this class is on virtualization a lot, I thought I will put at least few slides. So I have VLAN. So anyways, this is very difficult. So basically, some services trample on each other, overused by one service affects others. And second thing is because of the oversubscription, everybody affects everybody else. If you are oversubscribed, there is only one gigabit and 240 people are trying to get in, what is going to happen? Somebody is going to be killed, right? It better be not you, and so, so that's another problem. Poor reliability, one access virtual failure doubles the load on the others, and so, now we want to design network topology that will not have these problems. We already saw that whatever traffic is coming from below, more traffic is coming in and less going out. Right? And the ratio is called over subscription. So for example, you might have 32 10 gigabit down, only 8 times 10 gigabit up, and that would be 40 up, 30, 320 down, give you 4 to 1 over subscription. Core routers are 1 to 240 over subscribed in the sense that if you have a core router, they might have 240 servers underneath, two tiers down, each of them with one gigabit, but the core router has only maybe one gigabit out. Otherwise, right, so 240 can hit it, but it cannot really serve all of that. So that is, um, that is the basically the reason that you don't really want to go through the core routers as much as you can. If you want to go from one server to the next server, you want to keep them into the same tree, same part of the subtree, which is same part of the layer two tree, as much below, as close. To, so basically, you want, to, you want them to be as close as possible. Now, there is a problem with that. So if you have over subscription, then you cannot just move servers anywhere you want. So you cannot move from here to that part of the data center. That restricts us, right? So there are ways to take care of that problem later on. But right now, from the concept that we have learned in this class, 
दिस इज ए प्रॉब्लम सर्विस ट्रैम्पल ऑन ईच अदर एंड सो बिकॉज ऑफ सॉरी मूविंग अक्रॉस सर्विस इज पेनफुल रिक्वायर्स रिकन्फिग्रेशन ऑफ आईपी एड्रेसेस एंड व्हील एंड ट्रंक्स एंड दैट एक्चुअली इज द प्रॉब्लम विथ आईपी आईपी वाज नॉट डिजाइन विथ मोबिलिटी इन माइंड एंड सो इट जस्ट इंडिकेट द लोकेशन एंड देयर फॉर एवरी टाइम यू मूव यू हैव ए न्यू आईपी एड्रेस एंड दैट क्रिएट्स अ प्रॉब्लम नाउ पीपल हैव टू फिगर आउट हाउ टू गेट टू यू With Ethernet, that's not a problem because you keep the same IP, MAC address. Services trample on each other because if there is a bottleneck, then if one service uses more, then the other service get less. That's a problem, right? And so we need to fix that. Poor reliability. Now we have two access switches, but if one fails and you are using both, then it, the over subscription on the other one goes up by a factor of two. Hopefully you are not using it, then you are losing money anyway. Because if you are not using it, you have paid for the two, but you are using one. So that's not good either. So we somehow want to be able to use two, and not overload. Another utilization is that um, often times we don't use multiple paths; we just use one path. So one thing which is kind of a standard and becoming a standard, and is as we talk about in the next lecture. that we use is ecmp equal cast multipath equal cast multipath means that if somehow the switch knows that there are two paths to the destination left and right and they are both same cast then it will try to send 50% of the traffic this way 50% this way and that way you you are basically not congesting the shortest path i mean actually the question in this case is there are two shortest path Right, so you are not congesting one shortest path. Everybody understands ECMP. ECMP is equal cast multipath, so equal shortest cast. Other is, in, uh, issues are underutilization. That um, we are not using all the paths. Everybody is taking the shortest path, and that's a problem. You were told in 473, shortest path is best. right but if everybody took the shortest path what will happen <laughs> it will be congested and everything else is free empty right so so we don't want to do we want to do something different right so multiple path exists only one is used even if there are multiple shortest path we don't use parallel path we just use one well when the latency is issue but then you have to worry about the congestion because con latency is the one that affects the congestion and if if it is if it is if it is unloaded if it is under under loaded then yes shortest path is good for latency okay now hold on that thought keep up with that thought because that is not true but what we do is if there are two paths which are equal then we do ecmp equal cast multi path so that is what is common nowadays both at layer 3 as well as layer 2 ethernet as well as ip both will use ecmp which is equal cast multi path which means that if there are two shortest path half of the people will take this half of the people will take that first first statement you made is that all paths are equal that is not true if you are going from this rack to this rack that is short path if you are going from this rack to that rack this is long path we are talking about the latency about the le levels of the packet sizes here The latency here is three packet sizes because the queue is three packet sizes. You're going through only one switch. Over there, you're going through two switches. So you know, packet, so the, the I think the difference matters. So so basically, so the idea is that um, ECMP is used. I think I will stop right there. Um, I really encourage you to read that book. And um, because there's not there's no way I can cover everything you know in this class. You really have to read. to find all the detailed information okay and all the references are there every page i have tried to put the references every figure there is a source underneath so you know where it came from where i got the information and so please do okay